Get ready for me to trash some of your faves. Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm coming to you with a bit of a more controversial video because today I'm gonna be talking about some popular books I didn't like. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a little while now, you probably know that I have some pretty unpopular opinions about some very popular books and series. I really like talking about some of the books that I wasn't the biggest fan of because I feel like on booktube there are lots of books that get just so, so popular, and sometimes it can feel kind of isolating when you don't like one of those super popular books. So it's really nice for me to know sometimes that I'm not alone in disliking these books, and I know a lot of you have also told me that you feel really grateful that I also don't like some of these books. So today I decided that I would just put together my list of some of my most disliked popular books and series and share them all with you guys. Now I'm not going to put a disclaimer on this video because obviously if you're watching this video you want to know my unpopular opinions about these books and you know that I'm not trying to offend you. So without any further ado, let's just get into the books. The first book on my list is probably my most hated book of all time. And I think I can like truly say that because at the time that I read this book, I was absolutely in love with this series. But then I read this one and it completely shattered my love for these books. It completely changed my world and I haven't been able to get over it since. And that book is Breaking Dawn by Stephanie Meyer. As many of you may know, Twilight was a huge part of my life when I was in middle school. It completely changed me. It introduced me to YA and into reading in the way that I do now. It was a huge, huge part of my life. I read the first three books in the saga so quickly and I loved every single one of them so much. And then before I read Breaking Dawn, all of my friends and everyone on the internet had told me that Breaking Dawn was the best one in the series by far. It was so good and it was the perfect conclusion. So I had really, really high expectations going into this book. But then I read this book and it completely destroyed the entirety of Twilight for me. The thing with Twilight is that now I have a lot of problems with this series and technically I I could put the entire series on this list and say it's a popular book slash series that I don't like because I don't like it. But this book, apart from the problematicness that Twilight has in general, there's a specific reason why I don't like this book. And that reason roots from the time that I even read the series and when I loved it, so that's why I specifically wanted to include this one. In order to explain why I hate this book so much, I'm gonna have to get a little bit spoilery into Breaking Dawn, so if you don't want to be spoiled if you haven't read this series and you plan to for whatever reason, then just mute this video until I put the book down so you won't be spoiled. But I'm gonna start spoilers now, so just make sure you mute it so you don't get spoiled. The thing that is truly the worst thing about this book, in my opinion, is the fact that Jacob imprints on Renesme, And the reason that he ever was in love with Bella was not because he just cared about Bella, but it was because of the unborn, non-existent child inside of her. The thing you have to understand is that I loved Jacob's character. I shipped Bella and Edward, but Jacob was so precious and important to me, and I loved how much he cared about Bella. That was so, so significant in the story, and it was just one of my favorite parts of the book. Like, someone please explain to me how how you could take away their entire relationship and just base it off of the fact that he had imprinted on her unborn fetus. What? What purpose does that serve? I can't deal with that. It makes me so angry. This book is just no. No. When I read that, I legitimately, I'm not kidding, I legitimately threw the book across the room and I screamed because I couldn't take it. It still makes me so upset. I will never forgive this book for that and I just can't. I can't deal with it. So yeah, I'm still angry at this book. I'll forever be angry at this book. It's the bane of my existence and I hate it. I hate it so much. The next book on my list is a very, very popular one, but I think that opinions on this one are a bit more divided. I know a large majority of people who read this book actually really hated it, but there are some people who really did love it. So it's very divided, but it's still gonna be on my list. And that book, or play I should say, is none other than The Cursed Child. This book is technically considered the eighth Harry Potter story, but I do not consider it that at all. I don't know how many of you would be unaware of this, but if you are, it is basically the story that takes place with the children of the characters in the Harry Potter series. So it takes place after the war and after all of the events in the original series, and we follow their children and things happen. <laughs> That's really the best way that I can put this because this play is a complete and utter mess. I have a full spoilery book review for it if you want to go and watch it because I ranted so long 
so much in that video because I had a lot of things to say. But if you want to go and watch it, I'll leave it linked on the screen as well as down below. But essentially here, I'll just give you a rundown version of why I don't like this. First of all, like I mentioned, it's a complete and utter mess. Nothing in this series makes any logical sense. And I swear it's as if they didn't read the first seven Harry Potter books. And then they just decided to write this based off of some like fan fiction theories that they found on fanfiction.net. And speaking of, the whole thing is literally just a fan fiction and not a good one at that. It's full of plot holes. The characterization is just all wrong. Instead of developing the characters, the majority of them actually just regress. And truly, it cannot decide if it wants to be a drama or a comedy. And the writing is just bad. That is the only word I have to use for it. It is just bad writing. The thing is, it's not even written by J.K. Rowling. She helped come up with the idea, but I'm pretty sure it's written by Jack Thorne or whoever else it is who's on the cover. And every time I talk about how bad the writing in this book is, I always point to this one line, this one line that I still quote to this day because it is so funny to me, the fact that this line was even published in a work, and a work that is this popular completely blows my mind. Without giving away any spoilers, it is at one point when Albus and Scorpius are together and they're trying to figure out what to do and they see Bathilda Bagshot. And Scorpius thinks that she's very cool, so he says the line, Wow, squeak, my geekness is a quivering. Someone please explain to me how that line got through editing because I truly do not understand. This play is truly just a wild ride. Like I wasn't expecting that much out of it to begin with. So I can't say that I was like disappointed, but the fact that it exists and it's trying to be like claimed as the eighth Harry Potter story, that part makes me upset because it is not Harry Potter. It is just an unbelievable mess. There's so many things that happen in here that I still cannot even wrap my mind around. It's just honestly funny to me at this point. I'm not really mad about this one. I like to laugh at it because I just find it hilarious. Like I said, I know that a lot of people also do not like this book at all. So I know I'm not alone in this one, but it is a popular book that does have a decent number of people who enjoy it. And I truly just don't understand it. The next series on my list is another fairly popular one. And that is the Shatter Me trilogy by Tahara Mafi. Now I read this trilogy when I first joined booktube because it had a lot of hype surrounding it. I'd watched tons of people's videos saying that it was such a good series and that it's a lot of fun and the characters are great, the romance is wonderful. So I had really high expectations going into this book. And so I think that's what really got me with this one. Granted, I'm not the biggest fan of dystopian and this is a dystopian series. So I think that also contributed to my dislike of it. But personally, I just found the characters to be extremely bland. I thought Juliet was kind of overdone and I'd seen her a thousand times before in different books. The love triangle just did not do it for me. It was kind of the epitome of everything I don't like in a love triangle. And the main romance that everyone is kind of shipping in this series and the one that everyone pretty much wants Juliet to end up with was just not anything special again. <laughs> That's the thing with this series. There was nothing about it that stood out to me as like glaringly bad or problematic or whatever it may be. To me, the series just didn't really have anything to it that would make me like it. I did like Tahara Mafi's writing style. That was one of the things that I thought was really cool about the book, which is why I'd be really interested in reading some of her other work. But apart from that, there was nothing in these books that really made me want to keep reading, but I did end up reading them really quickly. I read all three of them in two days, but that's mostly just because I wanted to finish them because I just didn't want to keep reading anymore. So I can totally see why a lot of people would enjoy this series because it does have a lot of those like fun, fast paced YA tropes to it. But apart from that, it really just wasn't for me. So I don't really see myself picking up the next ones when they come out. The next books on this list are the ones that I'm probably the most anxious to talk about because I know how many people love these books. And that series is of course none other than Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. Where to begin with the Throne of Glass series? <laughs> so if you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably definitely know about the fact that I don't like these books. <laughs> but if you've been watching my channel from the very beginning, you probably know that I really loved the first and second books in the series when I first read them. So that's where we're gonna start with this today. When I first read Throne of Glass, I really, really liked this book, like I said. I thought it was a very fun YA fantasy. I liked all of the characters, I liked the relationships, and I really liked the world, and it had a lot of mystery to it, so it was fun and suspenseful. And then I read Crown of Midnight, and Crown of 
of Midnight just shattered my heart. I loved that book so much. It was my everything. Then I read Air of Fire and I was just kind of so-so about it. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. It was kind of a filler book for me. And then came along Queen of Shadows. And I read Queen of Shadows and I realized that that book was nothing like the first two books at all. And there were so many things that I hadn't realized in the first three books that were in this book that I really, really didn't like. But still at that time, I enjoyed Queen of Shadows to some degree because I still liked this world and I was still trying to enjoy these characters because I really liked them in the first two books. But then comes along Empire of Storms and it's kind of like a Breaking Dawn 2.0 situation where it just destroyed the whole series for me. I have spoilery reviews for both Queen of Shadows and Empire of Storms, so I'll leave those both linked on the screen as well as down below if you'd like to go and watch more of my spoilery thoughts because I go way more in depth there. But essentially, my dislike of this series boils down to a few things. First of all, the lack of representation and diversity in the series is kind of astounding considering the number of books and characters that she has. And it goes beyond the fact that there are so very few characters of color or non-heterosexual characters in her books. When she does have those characters, they're either killed off or written out of the story. That's just something that I can't condone and I'm so tired of seeing. The other thing is that I hate the romances in this book. I won't get into any specifics with any of the characters because it honestly doesn't matter. You could take any romance in this series, it's exactly the same as any of the other ones because it's full of the same problematic heteronormative tropes. Like, I'm not kidding you, every male character is the same in this series and while the female characters may have some variation, they all just kind of boil down to this snarky badass war who doesn't need a man, but she's gonna have one anyway because no one in this series can be single. And then when it comes to the male characters again, all of them are just these overprotective, extremely territorial characters who get jealous when their female love interests even speak to other male characters. I just, I can't deal with it. I've talked about this so many times, but I'm so tired of seeing that in these books. And the way that the relationships are just written and romanticized, the majority of them have to do with someone claiming another person or having some sort of ownership over another person, usually the male characters having that over the female characters, which like... And I just don't get why we're supposed to be rooting for those relationships when they're so harmful. And then the other thing that I haven't really talked about on my channel yet with this series is that it's kind of upheld as like these feminist books when really nothing about this series is feminist. Killing off or writing off POC characters, disabled characters, and gay characters is not a very feminist thing to do. Depicting relationships that are based on inequality or relationships where someone is constantly jealous of the other person or when one of the characters is extremely territorial of the other character and likes to quote unquote claim them is not feminist. And all of those things kind of make up the foundation of this series. So it truly baffles me when people are like, oh, read Throne of Glass. It's a feminist book because it's not. <laughs> So yeah, I could go on and on and on. I could literally make an entire video dedicated to why I don't like these books, but that's not going to happen. But because of those reasons, I am just over this series. I don't like it anymore. And I'm very disappointed that I liked the first two books so much and now I can't enjoy the rest of the series because I wish that it had continued in some sort of way where those first two books were still even relevant. Because let's be honest, at this point, the first two books don't even need to be a part of the series. <laughs> The next book I have here is not one that I have like very, very strong feelings towards about why I didn't like it. It was kind of just one of those ones that really wasn't for me, but I know it's very well loved. And that book is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This is an adult fantasy book that really reads more like YA fantasy, but it follows the story of this girl named Agnieszka who is in this village and every 17 years or so, I believe, there is this wizard named the dragon who comes into town and picks one of the 17 year old girls to take back with him to his tower to train her as a magician. But I was really, really excited to read this book because I love fantasy and I love fantastical worlds and magicians and all of this stuff just sounded super cool. Plus the cover is just super pretty. And a lot of people whose reviews I really trusted had really loved it too. So I was so, so excited going into it. And then I read it and the book just kind of fell flat for me. Mostly my biggest problem with this one was the magic system because I really just didn't click with it. I felt like the world was fairly well developed 
developed, but the magic system didn't fit in with the world that was created. So the two things just didn't feel cohesive. And there was just like this disconnect between me and the book. I like books where the magic feels real and possible. And in this one, I just didn't get that feeling from it. So I couldn't connect with the world and therefore the characters either. This is one of the books on this list though that I think I would actually give a second chance because I know so many people like it and I didn't have like glaring, glaring problems with it. So it's something that I would give a second chance. But hopefully if I ever do read it again, I will end up liking it more because I feel like it has a lot of potential, but it was just flat to me. The next book I have on this list is another fairly popular one, and that is Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. Me Before You is an adult contemporary novel that has a movie out now, and it is a very, very popular book. It got a lot of buzz when the movie was coming out, and that is when I read the book. And I'd heard so many people saying how great this book was and how fantastic and tear-jerking and heartbreaking the story was, so I was so excited to go into it. But then, once I started reading, I... <laughs> couldn't stand this book. This is one of my lowest rated books, I think, ever. Again, partially because it was a disappointment, and then also because I found it to be so problematic. I've written a whole like super extensive book review for it on Goodreads, so I'll leave that link down below if you'd like to read more of my thoughts. But here I will just say that I didn't like the ableist themes of the story. I didn't like the whole message of the story in general. It follows this man named Will who is quadriplegic, I believe, and he basically was in an accident and now he doesn't have the use of his body from below his neck, so he's paralyzed. But the whole premise of the story is based around the fact that if you're living a disabled life, you're not really living life. And that's just something I can't get on board with. I know a lot of people interpret it differently. Some people don't think that's what the story was about at all. Some people say that this is just one one person's individual story. And to that I say, when you're writing a book, you are not writing a book that is just intended for one person to read. You're writing a book that is intended for a wide audience of people. And yes, even if you're just telling one person's story, that one story has an effect on a large number of people, especially when it is a very popular book like this. So yes, to say that this was Will's experience is valid, but Will is a fictional character and this is not an autobiographical book or a memoir or anything like that. It's a fictionalized story about one person and that story is spreading a message about disability. And the message is just something that I do not support. Apart from that, I just did not like the writing of this book. Usually writing is not one of the biggest and most driving factors of why I will like or dislike a story, but in this one it was legitimately just difficult for me to read because the writing just did not work for me. I also found the writing to be really flat and one-dimensional, and the story, like the plot itself, really only had one possible ending, and you know that from the beginning, so there was only like one way that the story could go, so there was like no suspense, no drama, no nothing to it. I just like started and I knew how it was going to end, and then it ended that way, and like there was nothing for me to really feel throughout that. I didn't cry at all. I almost did one time because I really just wanted the book to be over. So yeah, I know that this book is extremely popular, but for all of those reasons, I just don't like it. And finally, the very last book I have on this list of popular books I didn't like is another very popular trilogy, and that is the Divergent trilogy by Veronica Roth. Now granted, it's not the whole trilogy because I've only read Divergent, so technically it's just Divergent that I don't like. And because I didn't like the book, I didn't read the rest of the series. The thing with Divergent is that I read Divergent the day that it came out. I was super into dystopian at the time. I was just off of reading The Hunger Games. I loved that series. I'd read so many other dystopians and this one was new and I was so excited to get into it. And I read the book and I liked it at the time. I just didn't really care all that much. It was just fine to me. But then the hype around the book started coming out. And I think that's what really made me dislike the book now as much as I do. Granted, there were problems that I had with it before the hype came out. Like I just didn't like Triss as a character. I didn't like her motivations. They didn't make any sense to me. And she just seemed really, really irrational, even though we were supposed to think that she was doing the right thing sometimes. I just never agreed with her. But then after the hype came out, everyone was upholding this as like, 
like the next Hunger Games. Like it was so good and so fantastic. And I just don't see that at all with this series. And honestly, now I've been kind of validated since most people didn't like Allegiant and the movie franchise was a complete flop. But I just don't think that it's as good as a lot of people say that it is. I feel like it just gets more praise than it actually deserves when there's a lot better dystopian out there. All right, so that is it for my list of popular books I didn't like. There are actually a lot more that are probably on this list as well. So if you guys would like to see another one of these videos, I can probably make a second one too. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with any of my opinions on these books. Like I said, I know a lot of these books are extremely popular and most people probably don't agree with me because so many people love these books. But you know, they're just my opinions and I want to know if other people agree with me too because I can't be alone. <laughs> if you'd like to continue talking to me about some of your very unpopular opinions on some very popular books, you can follow me on any of my social media. All of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye!